In this lesson, I want to tell you just a little bit about how what we do in physics as far as math is just a little bit different than what you did in your math classes. So three things we want to take a look at here. Um, first, you know, how is math used in physics? And second is the idea of parameters in an equation and variables in an equation. And then finally, we'll talk just a little bit about mathematical models and how they can be simple or complex. So here are how you would normally see equations in your math classes, like this one here, here, and here. And normally in math class, you see something like here's a variable, here, and here. So we might say uh, in this case that we had um, two variables like that. But what do you call the other things? I mean, what do we call this, the two and the six and the 11? Okay, well, we're gonna call them parameters. So you need to realize that in physics, this is how we think about these things. The variables are what we're really interested in, and then the parameters are the things that are adjustable from one situation to the next. Just like in math class, you might have this equation here, but the next time you work the problem, it might be a four instead of a two, or a three instead of a six, or a four instead of a five, okay? So here again, variable, variable, parameter, variable, variable, parameter. Now, take a look at what are, to a physicist, the same equations. Now, this first one, we have x squared and x. Over here, um, if you can kind of, once you see it, see there's a t squared and there's a t. So both of these are quadratic equations. They're polynomials of order two. In the first case, our parameters are two, negative six, and 11. In the second case, though, they're a little bit different. X sub i, V sub i, one half, and a. These other equations, again, you see this looks not too bad. Okay, that's there's nothing scary about that. Uh, if you were just faced with this guy right here, that might look pretty intimidating until you realize that what you're dealing with are parameters and variables. So the G, M1, M2 are the same as a 5, and the R squared is the same as the X squared. Now the next equation, you can see here, something squared, something squared, something squared, something squared, parameter, parameter, okay. Um, now there are different ways of looking at it, of course, but uh, what you need to begin to do is to train yourself to recognize that when you see, let's say something like this, all those crazy numbers there, the G, the M1, the M2, whatever. Okay, just, you know, just kind of in your mind's eye, put it in there as a number, okay, and then it's not so scary, because that's what we're gonna do later anyway. Okay, so when we use mathematics and physics, what we're really trying to do is to build a model, which is something that can explain using mathematics what we observe in the world. So the simplest of all are these linear ones, okay? And you probably have been seeing that guy uh, forever, all right? That's usually an algebra one or a pre-algebra kind of thing. And so it's typical, you know, if we have something that's increasing like this, then we say that that is a, um, uh, a linear model Okay, uh, we could have something that was acting like this. OK, 
Okay. And so what could that be? Well, it could be that this uh, red line here is, let's say, a hare racing a rabbit. And it's the hare. So it's here. It starts out right here. And it moves along like this. And the rabbit is over here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. The tortoise is over here. And it's moving along like this at a slower speed. Okay. Um, now it could turn out that the turtle and the rabbit, when they are moving along, they happen to run into a, uh, a kangaroo. And the kangaroo is going the other way down the path, like that. So each of these lines has its own characteristics that you're familiar with. A y-intercept, and in this case, that would be where they start. So rabbit, tortoise, kangaroo, okay. And in this case, the slope value m is going to be related to how fast that they're moving. Okay, this is a quadratic model, and it's a polynomial of order two. And again, you've seen that kind of thing uh, for a long time now. Uh, what can we do with that in physics? Well, we might say that um, you're standing on a bridge and you drop a coin into the water. And that coin is gonna follow, um, it's gonna drop down. And this might be the, the height of the coin over time. And so we use a quadratic model to connect how the coin is dropping to time. All right. Uh, now, you might have a friend. And let's say at the same time you drop the coin, the friend tosses uh, his or her coin straight up in the air. Okay. And then that might go like this. It's going to go up, peak, and then begin to come down like that. Okay, so again, it's going to be a parabola. Very nice quadratic uh, fit. These things work really, really well. There are other cases where we could have a parabola that went like this. Okay, so that might be um, somebody underneath the bridge shooting a rocket up at you. Okay. <laughs> And once the uh, once the rocket gets to that height, it's going to uh, hit your feet or something. I don't know. Lots of things we could do with that. Um, but that's your basic quadratic model. Now, this model uh, is one that you may not have seen, but probably you've seen this before. Um, this is what we call an exponential Okay, and the exponential, it could go something like this. All right, and in that case, uh, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we would call that exponential growth. All right, but there would be other situations where you might have something like this, and we would call that exponential decay. Okay, now... A lot of times when people use the word exponential, what they just mean is really fast or a lot, okay? But mathematically, uh, it's very technical. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that on in the next step. Hold on. Okay, so let me show you one of the things that's unique about the exponential function. So let's take an exponentially decaying function, sort of like... Um, this okay and these guys have a very unique property uh, in that once we come over here a certain amount it's gonna cut in half okay now we don't know how long that is two seconds 40 years we don't know but in a certain amount of time it will cut itself in half and the way it turns out then is the same amount of time later, it cuts in half again. And the same time later, it cuts in half again. And the same time later, it cuts in half again. And so on and so on. Um, this, in fact, is the concept uh, you may have heard of called half-life. Okay. Um, now, 
it can work the other way too. We could have something that's growing exponentially. And if it's growing exponentially, then it's kind of the opposite. It's going to go, let's say, half, one. Ooh, that is not the right. My bad. Sorry about that. It's going to go quarter, half, one, two, four, like that. So it's, instead of going by half every time, it's going to double every time, just like that. 